Hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. Uh, this is a very sentimental video for me because uh, we started the channel. I started with Jonathan, um, who can't be with us at the moment. He's on another continent. Um, and uh, Ivan has taken over the mantle from Jonathan as uh, the person who stands behind the camera and then in front of the computer doing the editing. But um, anyway, I started the journey, as, it, as many people know, I fell into doing this channel via Harry's, um, Harry Metcalf, the lovely Harry Metcalf, who is, has been a delight to uh, deal with and continues to be so. He's just an absolute gent. We rebuilt his Espada engine. He ended up making, I think, eight videos out of that. And people said, please, can we see more of Ian and the team and the workshop? So that's how we ended up, we sort of fell into making this YouTube channel uh, three years and nine months ago. Why it's sentimental is because it, the first video, um, apart from one that we sort of piggybacked onto that was me tuning a, a Mura Live at a London classic car show, th this was the first car that we uh, actually made a video about. It just surprised, hit me surprising. I've been quite emotional about it, actually. Um, uh, this car came in, it's the Mura that sold at RM Auctions in London, um, uh, whenever it was, 2019. Uh, and it was a German gentleman who bought it. Long story short, he, he consulted various Mura restoration companies uh, around, the, around the, the world, really. And um, we were the only one who were prepared to go the extra mile and preserve the interior. And that was a big deal. Uh, to me, it's a big deal. And to him, it was a big deal because he didn't just want blatant profiteering by us ripping things, perfectly good, original, lovely things apart and, and rebuilding them for the sake of it and for the sake of um, the old uh, money. We did all that. We got the job. It's been a laborious process, literally. F um, I don't know how many hours work has been involved in this. Probably 2000, something like that, maybe a bit more. Also, it's been, um, it's been a, a journey because um, it's just been such a lovely car to do. This was the car that was in the Black Forest. It sold very much in the public domain for £1.25 million in uh, the, the autumn of uh, 2019. It uh, came here for the reasons I've explained, and we have taken our time about it, partly because of frustrations of getting parts made and um, refurbished, etc., through COVID but also um, just because it's just been a labor intensive job. It's been quite tricky, this job, um, because we haven't just rebuilt everything. It, t it takes longer to restore something than to replace it. And a huge amount of this car is original. Um, uh, it's fully matching numbers. Uh, it had only two owners prior to this gentleman buying it. So we, are, we have restored this car for the third owner and we've done absolutely everything to this car. Uh, the original engine block uh, has been used, the original cylinder heads all stamped from their, uh, from their period in time. Um, we've had a spec of, set of specially made CP Carrillo pistons um, for it, which uh, actually increased the engine's um, responsiveness and just overall running. It's just uh, one area in technology where we can improve. We've also had some camshafts uh, made to a special profile, which is uh, very unusual. Um, it's, it's, it's unique to us. We've specially, specially um, had this computer designed, a, a polynomial type cam camshaft profile, which is superior to the original ones um, in terms of wear and um, and also the way it actually works, the, the way the engine runs and drives. Um, Craig has done a truly amazing job of <clears throat> taking all the original interior out, even the headlining, the carpets, carefully teasing them out with a heat gun to, uh, so that, because normally if you pull glued carpets out, they leave quite a lot of the pile um, in place rendering them totally useless. Uh, he's not, he's persevered with every square millimeter of this interior and done a fantastic job of putting the whole thing back in the car. Um, we've, um, what he did do was some of the, the, the door trims were just starting to ripple with the foam, the aging of the foam underneath. He's carefully peeled those apart, replaced them um, and put it all back together again. And the result is truly spectacular. This does not look like a 53 old uh, Mura interior. We did have to do some work because the car was driven in a, uh, what I would describe as a spirited manner by its second owner. 
and um, it, it, it's very easy to bottom the manure on a, a bump or something like that because they're so the ground clearance is so low on them um, and we had to do some repairs around uh, suspension pickup points and things like that a lot of work I mean we ended up doing some replating work on the body shell but also repainting the whole the whole thing um, the mirrors are nowhere near as rust prone as a lot of other Italian cars of that era, in fact a lot of cars for that matter, they are particularly um, good in terms of corrosion because most of the elements of the car, most of the, the, the frame elements, the way um, uh, Ingegneri Gianpaolo Dallara designed the chassis on the Miura and I had the, the pleasure of meeting him with the Italian job Miura that um, Olivier Nemesh and I discovered and authenticated some years ago. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Delara, one of my lifetime heroes, really. He was the, uh, the person, one of the three, Paolo Stanzani, Bob Wallace and uh, Mr. Delara, who were responsible for developing the Miura out of working hours. And he explained to me firsthand how he engineered the chassis, which was phenomenal, really. Um, and a lot of it is open plan. In fact, he designed a helicopter, a Lamborghini helicopter, a one-off which is in the Lamborghini Family Museum in um, Funno, near Bologna in Italy. It's well worth a visit. Uh, that's owned by Dr. Tonino Lamborghini, Ferruccio's son, and it has the one and only Lamborghini helicopter in there. And Mr. Delara designed the chassis on this car very much along the lines, I'm not sure which came first actually, probably the helicopter afterwards, um, using um, pressed steel sections which have big holes in them and that makes all the difference because it means that if the condensation and moisture gets in it's not a, a flushed and shut off box section like a Jaguar E-type um, or something like that and you don't start to get sweating inside the panel which causes the rust because the moisture gets in and can't get out with condensation and heat and cool and one thing or another. These are open with these holes as I've explained and that means that the chassis has far more of a chance of surviving because um, there's nowhere blanked off. It's sort of open to the elements. It sounds actually uh, completely counterintuitive. You'd think, you'd think a panel that was open to the elements would rust more. But no, if it's protected, it actually stands far more chance of survival. And there really is only uh, two or three areas on a Miura where you have box sections. James has replaced those and, and re-engineered them um, beautifully, so you wouldn't know they'd been done. But um, the whole car, we've, we've basically restored every last component on this car, everything. It's turned out ever so well. And I, I'm actually gonna take this car for a drive and see how it performs on the road. I'll take my old fashioned clipboard and pen with me just to make a note of any, any faults um, <clears throat> I see. And um, yeah, let's take the car out and uh, get to grips with it on the road. And this is really probably the first proper road test it's had. We've, we've got the luxury here of road testing cars around some service roads, which are off the public road grid, but it's not the same as actually getting it on the road and um, giving it the bifters, to use a scouse expression from where I come from. Um, so we're going to give it the bifters and uh, take it for a run. Well, um, as uh, Mr. Drax from uh, the James Bond film Moonraker would have said, Michael Los Lonsdale, one of my favourite actors, would have said, <coughs> um, Mr. Bond, you have arrived at a very propitious moment. And um, this is a very propitious moment, to use a very big old English word, because uh, while we've been thinking about making this video, this has actually just come out. And this is Classic Cars magazine's 13-page um, feature on the restoration and tuning of this car. And um, if ever we needed confirmation that this was the right time to make this video, um, not only because things have come full circle and this was the subject of our first ever Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video, but also this has just come out. So it's an absolute delight to uh, see that in print. Very good timing and um, let's get on. Let's, uh, let's talk more about the car and take it for a run. Well, to use one of my oft-used um, phrases, here we are in a seven-figure car on the public road, 
sharing it with uh, all sorts of other interesting road users. What can possibly go wrong? But uh, my first impressions are that this car is uh, behaving very well. Um, we've had this wheel alignment all done on the car, the four wheel alignment set up. Uh, and um, we did need to set it up because James has re-welded some of the outer position suspension mountings. But the steering wheel is plumb straight, absolutely dead straight. Um, so uh, there's a little bit more wind from the transfer gears than I would like um, on the uh, on the uh, the gear train between the engine and the transmission but it's running still running thin running in oil and when it has the right oil in uh, that will actually calm down but uh, I mean this is this is lovely it really is everything's working speedometer which actually interestingly does not even start registering until 40 kmh or 25 miles an hour <coughs> which probably says a great deal but um, yeah, the car feels well planted on the road. I have noticed a bit of a squeak from the steering column uh, when it's off centre. So we'll have to have a look at that. So that's one for the list, but otherwise all the gauges are working properly. Engine is still cold at the moment. But um, I tell you what, if all post cars, post restoration, drove almost out the box like this, I'd be a very happy chappy. Oh, this is a delight. The, uh, what is so amazing about these cars is the ride handling compromise. So the ride is remarkably smooth. It's not uh, bone jarring at all. There are a lot of modern cars that uh, just will we'll not ride as smoothly as this. Even sports, you know, um, sports cars will be more harsh. And yet it does handle. Um, it will still pull a considerable amount of G, both under acceleration, braking and cornering. And I'm driving it very slowly at the moment just to warm it through, but I can already tell it feels great. It's very refined, he says, putting his foot down and causing some induction roar, but this is great. It's an absolute delight. I am super happy with this. The other thing I'm noticing immediately is the gearbox. Uh, gearboxes on mirrors can vary massively in terms of weight and um, shift pattern quality, etc. And normally new Miura gearboxes are a nightmare until they bed in because the, uh, the synchro rings are C-shaped and they have a small gap in them and they um, they take a lot of compressing they take a lot of compressing for the hub when it's new engine's keen to say the least that was a whisker of throttle same again oh brakes feel lovely no pulling let me just try that again there we go lovely just trying to try it on this side of the road. Again, perfectly aligned steering wheel, even with the other camber, which is very important for when the car goes back to Germany. Um, but the gear change is absolutely beautiful. And the re one of the reasons for that is because a lot of this gearbox was in incredibly good condition. Um, the gears themselves were perfect. The synchro hubs, the original synchro hubs and rings were also perfect, which is extremely unusual. And I suspect the reason for that is because the, uh, the two owners of the car who had driven it, it's t certified, authenticated, documented total of 28,000 kilometers only, which is about 17, 18,000 miles. I'm sure they, they drove it very carefully, which is why the gearbox has survived so intact. Um, again, you can the, hear the transfer gear noise there. Once it's got the proper oil then and uh, everything's checked over and tightened up, that will quieten down. But the gear change is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to demonstrate the gear change now. Um, just I'm going to put it down to second without any double D clutching. Look at that, beautiful. Into third, nice and easy. I can even go probably from three to four 
with one finger, which is just fantastic. That is the sign of a perfectly set up Mura gearbox. And if we'd replaced all the parts in it, it wouldn't be like that for the reasons I've explained. It would be st stiff and awkward and obstructive, probably needing readjusting after the first five or 600 miles because that's what new Mura gearboxes are like. We've managed to conserve the original parts. They're just nicely broken in and no more. Absolutely fantastic. Um, the whole car just feels wonderful. Um, there's no knocks, scrapes, clunks, rattles, squeaks, apart from the one I've noticed on the steering column. But um, this is lovely, 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 lovely. Just try fifth gear to make sure it's it's there and working. Oh yeah, lovely. Um, considering this is straight out the box, this is fantastic. Literally, we uh, this car is just um, a few hours old in terms of operation. Um, I'm just opening the taps. That was. Uh, three and a half thousand revs and um, I'm going to take it up to four and no more to start with no more than a quarter throttle the gearbox is uh, the engine is beautifully quiet as is the gearbox which just throws that transfer gear into prominence a bit but this is I don't know what I can say really. It's very refined. Uh, I'm very happy with this. Everything's working well. Oil pressure is uh, about six kilograms per centimeter, five or six, which is fine. Um, that's a very high oil pressure. Round about, uh, well, it's over 100 PSI, about 90 PSI. This is just lovely. Uh, I can't start doing anything crazy in this car. Uh, acceleration or engine usage wise because um, it is literally almost brand new um, but I mean it, it's pulling it's tuned very nicely on those uh, 12 carburetor chokes all 12 cylinders are perfectly balanced um, fueling and uh, air wise it's just an absolute delight And the horn works. <laughs> Always a bonus. Um, no, this is great. I'll just give it a little bit of an open up. Just to... Uh, let's just take it down a cog or two. There we go. Down to about 2,500 RPM. Oh. That was just the merest touch of the throttle. And even though that was a maximum of 4,000 RPM, this car is super eager. It really is. Um, those uh, lovely pistons doing their, doing their dances inside the engine. This is great. I'm very, very happy with this. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure our customer is going to be too. This is, uh, to be perfectly truthful, this is better than it has any right to be because normally there are things that need to be done. Um, but this is, uh, this is, this is good straight out of the box. We'll spanner check everything, make sure it's all happy, um, put a few more miles on it, but this is going to be good to go. It really is very very happy with that that's a good day in the office it really is the culmination of uh, three over three years work and it's uh, it's Lamborghini perfection I am very happy I'm so happy with this car beautiful sunny day car behaving perfectly I remember when we took the Italian job Miura back to the Great St Bernard Pass in the Alps after uh, Olivier Nemesh and I discovered the car and authenticated it after uh, whatever it was, 50 years. Uh, it, uh, it reminds me of that, of driving this car, that car around the Great St Bernard Pass 
I feel like bursting into song. Questi giorni quando vieni il bel sole la 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 Ah! My singing could never match the beautiful sound of a V12, but I had to indulge myself and savour the moment. Well, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe and uh, we'll be back with something else very soon.